So this is the second part of my video on risks and returns. So let's start. There are many different types of risks in the market. Just like default risk ho sakta hai, currency risk ho sakta hai, liquidity risk ho sakta hai. And the beautiful thing about finance is that you can calculate and isolate these risks either individually or at a total level as well. A security or a investment ka jo combined risk hota hai, usko hum log evaluate karte hai standard deviation se. Jab aapke returns unknown ho ya uncertain ho, then we say that your returns are having variability and thus they are risky. This variability in returns of asset is measured through standard deviation. So I'll take example of the standard deviation of the daily returns of Sensex in the year 2023. And for this, I have taken the data from the website of BSC. We'll start with the daily closing value of Sensex for every single trading day of 2023. Now, this daily uh, closing price se daily returns calculate karte hai, is tarih se. अब इन डेली रिटर्न्स का अर्थमेटिक मीन कैलकुलेट करते हैं तो ये नंबर आ जाएगा आपका और फिर उस अर्थमेटिक मीन से हम डिविएशंस को कैलकुलेट करते हैं और फिर यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मूला वी कैलकुलेट द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑफ द डेली रिटर्न्स Instead of going through this lengthy process, you can also take advantage of the Excel's formula ST div and use that formula directly and you'll get the same result uh, as you can see in my excel file uh, the results match exactly with each other so it's, it's up to you whether you want to go through the detail or you can just take the advantage of the formula in excel and now using this uh, base we can also calculate the annual standard deviation of the year 2023 uh, and the value of the annual standard deviation of the daily returns of the Sensex in 2023 was 9.75%. Now, we have to calculate the standard deviation, but uh, how should I interpret? Lowest daily return number was negative 1.53 and the highest daily return was 2.05%. This range is a very high level ka idea that you can do negative 1.53 or 2.05% return bhi bana sakte, because they are the maximum and the minimum. So it's a range. It doesn't give you a complete information. Let's say if you want to deep dive karna ho is, uh, data, pe upar, to let's say you want to know the chances of losing more than 0.75%. And if we look at the daily returns data, there were 24 days when Sensex lost more than 0.75% in one single trading day. And there were 245 trading days in 2023. So that means there was a 10% chance of losing more than 0.75% in one single trading day in the year 2023. Now I'll rephrase these questions. Can you tell me what are the chances of losing more than two times of the average daily return in 2023? Or what are the chances of gaining more than three times of average daily return in 2023? If you notice, I am now linking probability of daily returns and losses on the average daily return of Sensex. So the answer to these questions, that comes from the standard deviation. If you have the mean return of 0.07% and most of the daily return values are centered around that number. They are not exactly 0.07% on a daily basis but they are forming like a cloud and slowly the values spread further away from 0.07% and from this property of data we derive variability. Volatility ke naam se hai. So the dispersion of returns around their mean returns is the central theme of risk and reward in finance and the standard deviation measures exactly that the dispersion of data around the mean of the data. Do you like that? This video is a little technical ho gaya, uh, but these concepts are building blocks. I will try my best to simplify the concepts. So coming back and uh, this concept of standard deviation as a measure of risk was formalized by Harry Markovich in 1952. He published a paper and because of that, he is known as the father of the modern portfolio theory. Markovich was awarded Nobel Prize in 1990 for his work on the portfolio theory. But since then, there has been a huge volume of research on this area of risk. Why? Because markets reward the skill. If you're able to correctly identify and correctly measure the risk in financial instruments, in financial markets, then there is no limit to the money you can make. 
Now, before I conclude the risk return trade-off, we must understand the limitations also. We are essentially making two very important assumptions. The first assumption is that the markets are efficient. I will not get into the details of how we define the efficiency of the markets, but in a very layman language, it means that everyone has the same information about everything and anyone can make a trade basis on that information immediately at no cost. Clearly, this is not a practical assumption. But moving on to the second and possibly even more dangerous assumption, in my opinion, is that the returns are normally distributed. And if you're an employee working for a large corporate, then you would definitely know this as the bell curve because your HR team would dutifully remind you about the bell curve every year during your performance appraisal. But in real world, the returns are not uh, normally distributed. The distribution in real world looks something like this now this data is of u.s market returns of around 90 years data reasonably presents real life distribution of returns i remind you these are just basics because those things are so simple simple hoti the market may har koi paisa bana um, and please do not forget to like and subscribe thank you very much